Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Dear students, this is the second lecture. Uh, we are still dealing with uh, English phonetics and phonology. The, the second chapter entitled The Production of Speech Sounds. Actually, the production of speech sounds requires pushing the air outside the mouth or the nose via contracting muscles. So we have muscles that are responsible for expelling the air or if you like pushing the air uh, outside uh, either one of the two cavities, the oral or the mouth cavity or the nasal or the nose cavity if you like. This is the normal way of producing sounds in English, Arabic, and most languages of the world. That is to push the air outward. That's why this mechanism of speech production is called pulmonic aggressive airstream mechanism. We call it aggressive because the air is pushed outward, outward, okay? And we call it we call it sorry we call it pulmonic, because because the air is pushed through or from the lungs, so pulmonic because the air is pushed from the lungs, and it is aggressive or aggressive sorry not aggressive, aggressive, because the direction of the air is outward not inward, okay. Actually, the, the majority of human sounds are produced by uh, this mechanism, the, the aggressive pulmonic airstream mechanism, okay? There are uh, a few languages, actually, which uh, have different mechanism, which is called aggressive airstream mechanism. Very few languages, maybe languages spoken in some parts of Africa, uh, actually in this uh, airstream mechanism, very few sounds can be produced, just like the sound oh, in which if you try it, you can feel that you are taking the air inside, not outside, as in the pronunciation, for example, of the sound sorry, <coughs> the sound fa or the sound s, sh, k. In all these so sounds, the air is pushed outside the mouth. Or m, mm, n, mm, the air is also pushed outside, but this time it is pushed through the, the nasal cavity. While in, in, in ingressive airstream mechanism, the air is taken outside. This, this kind of, of, of sounds we can have. So, how do we exactly produce sounds? First, the air passes through the larynx. The larynx. And the larynx is ended either by the oral cavity or the nasal cavity. So, again, the air that is pushed through the larynx will either take the direction of the oral cavity or the direction of the nasal cavity. This, uh, these two directions are uh, uh, actually controlled by the position of the soft palate. We are going to talk about this a minute later. The soft palate will uh, uh, organize the movement or the direction of, of the airstream. Now, throughout its way out, the air stream is modified, and modified is a very important word here, by the different speech organs, just like the lips, the teeth, the tongue, etc. So, uh, while the air is pushed out, it is going to be stopped sometimes, completely, sometimes partially, by different organs of speech, before it finds its way out, okay? 
Now this leads us to very uh, to a very important question. Why do we have different sounds? And how do we have different sounds? Actually we have different sounds because we have different speech organs that's moving different ways and can take different shapes or positions and they interact with each other in different ways and the result is different sounds. So for example, the, the organs of speech, just like the, the, the tongue and the roof of the mouth. The tongue can move in different ways and, and take, can take different shapes because the mouth is an active organ of speech, not just like the roof of the mouth. The roof of the mouth uh, um, um, is, is described as a passive articulator or a passive speech organ because it doesn't move. Only the soft palate can move. Okay? When the, the tongue takes the, the shape that, um, in which the back of the tongue is, is raised, or most raised, and be in touch with the soft palate, this is a kind of interaction between two different speech organs which are in our example, the back of the tongue and the soft palate. When they come in contact with each other, the result is a velar sound, is a velar sound. Another example, when the two lips are pressed together, pressed together and the air is completely stopped for a short time, here we have a consonant like P, P, okay? So we have different speech organs, and different interactions, the result is to have different sounds. Now, let's define articulate, articulatory phonetics. Articulatory phonetics is a branch of phonetics. We have branches of phonetics. One of them is articulatory phonetics. We have auditory phonetics. We have acoustic phonetics and so on. So, articulatory phonetics is that subfield of phonetics that is concerned with the articulation of speech sounds. The way um, a certain sound is produced, the manner, if you like, the place where, the, where a, certain, uh, uh, um, a certain sound is produced. This is all related to articulation. And actually, it is also uh, um, in, interested uh, in articulators, describing them, their movements, their shapes. And when we say articulators, we mean speech organs. This is a figure that shows the basic organs of speech we have. Okay, this is the larynx. Inside the larynx, we have the vocal cords. This is also very important. We may talk about this in, a, in details later on. Then we have the pharynx. The pharynx. The pharynx ends either with the oral cavity or with the nasal cavity. Now this is the soft palate. The soft palate is responsible for uh, controlling the direction of the airstream. In our picture here, it is in a raised position. It is raised. When it is raised, you can see here that the nasal cavity is blocked while the oral cavity is open. Here, the result is to pronounce an oral sound. But sometimes the velum or the soft palate is lowered and be here. Take this position. In this case, the oral cavity is closed and the nasal cavity is open and the result is a nasal sound. These are, this is the oral cavity, the one made in yellow, and the one made in pink is the nasal cavity. This is the, the, the roof of the mouth. This is the roof of the mouth. The velum, the heart palate, and the alveolar ridge. The alveolar ridge is the area immediately behind the upper front teeth. And there is the tongue, which is the most important organ of speech. This is the tip of the tongue, the body, the root. Sometimes it's 
the tip, the blade, the front, and the the back and the root of the tongue. Sometimes it is divided into four. Sometimes it's divided into five. It depends on whether we include the root or not. If we include it, it becomes five parts. If we exclude it, it becomes of four parts. Here we have the lips, the upper lip and the lower lip, the teeth, the upper teeth and the lower teeth. These are the basic uh, speech organs. Now, one important thing to, uh, to understand here is that speech organs are often divided into active and passive. So any speech organ of the ones we have here is either an active articulator or a passive articulator. If this articulator can move, it is an active articulator. If it cannot move, it is a passive articulator. So the vocal cords is an active articulator. The soft palate is also an active articulator. While the heart palate, for example, the palate is passive, it cannot move. The tongue is an active articulator because we can move the tongue, the tip, the tip of the tongue, the, the front, the blade, and even the back of the tongue. The lips are also active articulators because we can move them up and down. The alveolar ridge is not an active articulator because it doesn't move, and so on. This is the pharynx, the one here. It is a tube just above the larynx. At its top end, it is divided into two parts, the, the back of the oral cavity and the beginning of the nasal cavity. So the, the vocal tract has two ends. It either ends with the mouth or ends with the nose. The soft palate, as I said, sometimes it's called the velum. It's just like a valve that allows her to go either through the mouth or through the nose. It can take two different positions. It could be raised and the nasal cavity is closed in this case. And the result is an oral sound. Sometimes it's lowered and the nasal cavity is open. And the result is a nasal sound. In the pronunciation of the sound, th, th for example, th, th, the nasal cavity is raised. The uh, sorry, the soft palate is is raised. The nasal cavity is closed, and th is an oral sound. While an m, for example, the soft palate is lowered. The nasal cavity is open. And the result is a sound like mm, mm, okay. The heart palate is the roof of the mouth. It's it has a smooth curved surface that can be felt with the tongue. It is the hard part of the roof of the mouth. We can use it in the pronunciation of sounds like yeah. Yeah, yeah, you can feel it. You can feel that the tongue is raised and is in contact with the heart palate. If we are asked to <clears throat> practically show whether the sound ma or uh, uh, that the sound ma is nasal, what do we do? We can practically check this when we say mm, and we suddenly close the nostrils with our fingers we can feel that the sound will stop. It means that if we close the nasal cavity, there is no longer ma. And this is a proof that ma is a nasal sound. How can we prove that ma is not a, an oral sound? We can say m mm, and we close our mouth with our hand. If the sound continues, it means it's not an oral sound. It has nothing to do with the oral cavity. Now I'm going to try it. I will say mm, and and put my hand on my mouth. Mm, 
nothing will happen and the sound will continue normally but if it is uh, if we want if we if we close our nose with our fingers no the sound will stop i'll try it now mm, mm. as soon as i close my nose the sound will stop this is a proof that the sound ma is a nasal sound okay this is the end of the lecture thanks for listening see you again in another lecture bye bye